Hello and welcome. Kubernetes is all about networking. So if you want to be successful in managing and writing application for Kubernetes, you should really understand, have some understanding of how network works within Kubernetes. There are three types of networks within Kubernetes, node network, cluster network, and pod network. So the node network is really how the, um, the servers are set up. That is the master and um, the, the worker nodes, how they are connected to each other, what kind of subnet they're on, what IP addresses they're, they're using. For the most part, they are kind of outside the realm of Kubernetes, but obviously very important because if they are, aren't set up correctly, we can't really use Kubernetes at all. Also, Kubernetes uses, uh, once you create pods and services, Kubernetes manipulates the IP routing on those servers on both master and working order in order to uh, make communication available between among pods and between pods and between pods and services. Cluster network is responsible for providing um, connectivity to the services from inside and outside the cluster. So this is really the only way that you can expose your services that are installed inside the pods through services. And the last one is pod networking, and that is concerned about providing network connectivity between pods on the same uh, server or on a different server, and also be able to consume um, services. So let's talk about the agenda. In the upcoming videos, uh, starting with this one, I, I I'm planning to cover Kubernetes networking as much as possible. And to begin with, I'll start talking about Kubernetes pod network. I'll cover pod networking first, because that's the most fundamental and probably the most complex part of Kubernetes networking. Also, in the first video of this one, I will cover some basic networking constructs. The reason for that is everything is becoming virtualized, including networks. And sometimes you're required, you'll be required to actually create networks, um, adapter card, um, network adapters, bridges, and so on inside the application and create actual virtual networks. So some basic understanding of network is, is uh, required. And that is why I'll start with review Network OSI, which is kind of the Bible of everything network. So you have to understand how the OSI model works before understanding anything else. And then we review some key network devices, physical and virtual, such as routers, switches, and how packets travel through um, those in a network. We will then learn um, about network namespaces and this is really fundamental for understanding the container networking. As, as you know, containers are the building blocks of Kubernetes pods. So in order to understand how pod networking understand, works, you need to understand how actually the container networking um, works. We will wrap this video up by creating virtual networks on a couple of VMs and bridge them together to simulate the container inner and inter networking. And that becomes the, the basis for us to understand in, in the future uh, presentation how the pod networking works within uh, Kubernetes. So let's talk about the OSI model. OSI stands for Open Systems Interconnect Model. It was defined in the 1970s. They were looking for a standard so that different computer systems and telecommunication systems, for that matter, be able to communicate with each other. OSI defines different layers of networking. And originally, there were seven layers. But in the recent times, two of them are no longer needed or used anymore. So we will concentrate only on the five uh, most uh, important ones. Each layer has a layer number, has a layer name, has a protocol, as a unit of measurement and has and some addressing scheme. So let's go through each layer. Layer one is called physical layer. 
And this is literally the medium through which information travels. This could be fire optics cables, could be twisted pair cables, could be coax cables, if they are wired or wireless, if there are wireless devices. But each one of those has a precise protocol. For instance, for twisted pair, the protocol is 10 base T. For wireless, it's 80211. The data unit is bits, called bits, and there's no address schemes defined here. Layer two is called data link layer. The protocol is ethernet or Wi-Fi, depending if it's wired or wireless. The data unit is frames, and the other thing is MAC address. One thing to note about this data link layer is it's point to point. So we can only go one hop. Uh, let's say you're from your computer to your internet provider. You can only internet carry you. He knows how to get there one hop. And then from your from that um, internet provider to your final destination, say going to target.com, that would be a different hub, and that would be a different Ethernet kind of segment. Level three, layer three is called network, and the protocol is IP. Data unit is datagram, and the other thing is IP address. <coughs> So as I mentioned, Ethernet can only go from one hub to the other. And that's where the network layer assists the Ethernet frames to go from um, source to destination. That kind of guide how to get from one hub to the other. Layer four is transport layer. And the protocol is TCP, UDP. There are other protocols, but these are the most important ones. The data unit is segment. And the other thing is port. So again, if you create a, um, a service, it has to have a port number in order to be reachable. And the last layer, layer five, is called application layer. It, various protocols are defined here, such as HTTP, SMTP. This is basically the data formats that the sender and receiver, they agree on to send or receive. The data. Um, unit is message, and there's no addressing scheme defined here also. So let's think about an example to kind of drive home um, how these various layers relate to each other. Let's say you are sending um, a physical mail from to your friend in a different city. So uh, by looking at this different protocol, the first thing that probably you need to think about is, okay, what language your friend speaks? Is it English or a different language? So you kind of format, you write your letter in that protocol or that language. So that would be um, the application layer. You, de you decide the format that you're going to send the message. The physical layer, I think of it as the freeways, highways, byways that connects from your house to his house in a different location, different cities or county. Data link uh, layer or internet, you can think of it as the postal truck that is carrying your letter. And your letter is, you can think of it as the frame which contains your letter. Um, it, not only it has your um, information that you want to send, it also has your friend's um, physical address. But as you can see, um, the other, the address is in, um, and IP addresses is in the different layer. So the, the frames includes both the Ethernet frames and also information um, from the in, in the network. So that would that would be your friend's um, physical address. So that would be part of the um, network layer. You can think of it as the address that you're sending to. The other part is all these routing that uh, IP routing that routers provide different routers. So those two combination of the two helps your um, truck driver to get from your destination to uh, your friend's house. And then when we get to the final destination, the truck or the mailman has to put in a precise location, and that precise location is your mailbox. So you can think of the port num the port as a mailbox. So hopefully. This is um, kind of help you a little bit understand different models. 
And the, again, the, the, it's important to understand there are various layers. For instance, TCP and IP, there are different layers, although we lump them together, TCP and IP. Sometimes we even lump Ethernet and IP uh, network together. So these are precisely the different layers. And it becomes especially important when you um, look at the pod networking and you look at different um, network providers, such as Calico um, or other ones, they usually either um, operate at the data link layer or network layer. So you kind of understanding these layers uh, help you understand in the future. Okay, now that we learn uh, a little bit about OSI model, let's take a look at some of the network devices that we use, the common ones, and in what layers they reside. So the first one is a network adapter or network interface. It connects a device to a network. It has a MAC address assigned by the manufacturer, so this is a unique number. And we can assign to it an IP address. And this is a layer two device. So this is a layer two device that connects, as you can see, it's got a portal where it connects a uh, wire to the internet. So it connects the layer one to the layer two uh, and to the computer. Next step is switch. Uh, switch is also called a Mac bridge. A network switch is really a multi-port uh, network bridge that uses Mac addresses to forward data at the data link layer to other uh, layers. Um, so we, we are dealing with MAC addresses here in this layer. And it maintains a MAC to port switch slot. So each one, as you can see, it got multiple ports here. And it has a table that knows, for instance, this one, this adapter with say MAC address A is connected to port uh, one and so on. So when Communicate when I mean, the computers want to communicate within the same subnet, that is, we are not crossing subnets in the same subnet, they're actually going everything going through the switch. And at that, at that point, no IP is actually in, involved because we are using MAC addresses in order to uh, computer communicate with each other. Next one is a router, so this is it's also called a default gateway. I've seen people get confused when we talk about uh, default gateway. The default gateway is really a router. And a router is a networking device that forwards data packets between computer networks. This is a layer three device. And it maintains a routing table. So similar to this um, switch, it also the router also has a table but totally different. This maintains a routing table. So when you know, on your computer, once we, we are getting out of our subnet, um, we are going to a different network, for instance, internet, then the router has a table which then assists the layer two uh, communication, that is the frames that are coming, the ethernet frames, how to get to the next hub. Also note, and this is very important, and that's, uh, we will uh, get to this later, the virtual device, the virtual versions of these devices um, are used in VMs and containers. So you can create a virtualized version of a network adapter, a switch, and even a router. So I mean, we'll do them later on. So remember that these are not just physical, we can also create those uh, in code. And that's how actually VMs, because VMs really don't, don't really exist outside their host. So everything that they have, the network adapter, the bridges that they use, everything is virtualized. And then uh, I'll show you how to do that, how to create those in code a little bit later on. Okay, now that we learned about the OSI model, network model, and some of the network uh, devices that are used in networking, let's put our knowledge into tests. And we look at both a physical network and uh, later on a little bit in the net virtual network and how everything works. So this is actually my home network. Um, I have a switch, which also has an uh, um, access point, wireless, and I have a number of devices connected to it. So, and I have a number of devices that are physically connected through Ethernet cable, like this one. And I have a couple of devices that are connected through the access point. So everything, all the communications on this side, because they're all on the same subnet, 
um, they all go through the switch and they communicate to, the, to each other directly. All these devices communicate uh, through um, Ethernet, and that's layer two, and they use frames directly. Uh, now, if the device wants to talk to, like the device wants to call to a service on the internet, let's say target.com on the other, the other side of the world. So the request goes to switch, go to the router. Now router, as you can see, it's got two IP address. One is internal 10.001, which is the same, uh, has the same network ID as this, uh, these devices here. And also it's had a external, which starts with 24 dot start start. So that I don't want to reveal my router IP address, but that starts with 24 dot. So that, that's how a router is able to connect different networks together because it, it has two or more. It could have more than two, but two is a minimum number of um, interfaces that a router can have. The router also has a function of the NAT or network address translation. And so what is that? So all the devices here, they use what is called a private network um, address. So all the network addresses that start with 10, 192, and 172. So 10, 182, and 172. Um, these are all um, is considered as private network. Everything else is public. So because these are private, IP addresses, they, they cannot be addressed from outside the network. So the router, what it does through its NAT functionality, it changes the source IP address of this computer to its external IP address. And then sends the request through the internet to that service, and the service when the request gets the request, responds, and again, it comes back here, and NAT does the reverse when it comes back. It swaps out the uh, IP address, external IP address of the router with the address of the actual device. So there is a NAT a table here the NAT maintains that has the mapping between what is what's called originally and uh, uh, so that that's how it knows when the request comes back. If this is a service that was called, then it has to reroute it back or. Uh, the IP address needs to be changed back to whatever it was here. So that's how uh, communication happens. So everything over here uh, is purely uh, Ethernet and MAC addresses here when they want these companies want to, to communicate to each other. However, when we go beyond uh, our local network, then we use uh, the IP or the network layer, network layer, th uh, layer three, which is the network or IP protocol. And that's, that's how it's all to um, router users to route their request uh, to send to the destination. So this is the physical. I also have, I have this computer that has a hypervisor and I have Windows, so I have Hyper-V installed. So within that, I have two VMs. I have two Ubuntu, I call them Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2. And I have defined a virtual um, interface or network card for this one and this one. So as you can see now, the IP address is 192.168.0.10 for this one, and 192.168. So these are in 192 um, subnet. I've also created, a, defined a virtual uh, switch or bridge, so that enables these two communicators to uh, talk to each other. I've also defined and um, a virtual adapter for my computer here. So this one has two adapters now. One physical, which is the, the IP address that we can see here, 10.087. And now I have created another one, 192.168.01. So again, now this device, uh, my computer becomes a router. So a router doesn't have to be a dedicated box. We can also um, use our own um, computers as Rather, all we need is two different uh, adapters. One is virtual and one is physical. So let's say this Ubuntu wants, wants to call a service on this computer. The request, again, goes through uh, the virtual switch. And then this network adapter, again, um, acts as a router. It has an adding fun functionality. It changes the IP address from 192 to 10.0087. So it basically changes the 
the source IP address from 192.168.0.10 into 10.0.0.10 is then it goes through the switch, finds this uh, computer, gets a result back, and, and then in reverse, comes back here, goes to the NAT, and that changes the destination from itself, which is 192.168.01, into 192.168.0.10. And again, through the switch, it results come back to this. So again, and then and the, um, we, we can also create um, containers within each one of these VMs. And that's what we're going to do ne in the next section. We are going to actually define, um, simulate, we don't create the actual um, container, but we create what is called namespaces that um, kind of simulate um, containers. And then we talk about how they communicate. But the, there's just always the same thing. If you understand how the communication within and outside the network works, up here and down here, then is basically the same thing when we talk about containers and how they communicate. Now let's dive deeper into the virtual side of networking. And we're going to talk about a couple of very important topics. <clears throat> one is called network namespaces, and the other one is called virtual ethernet or wet interface. So a network namespace provides isolation of the system resources associated with networking. So basically within a host, we can claim one area, some area, <coughs> put a boundary around it as, um, as for a network speaking. And that segment has its own network devices, that is the adapter, bridges, and so on. <coughs> It has its own IP4 and IP6 protocol stacks. <clears throat> it has its own IP routing, firewall rules, port number, etc. So this is how actually the container is created. Containers are created within uh, namespaces. And then the wet devices or virtual Ethernet um, interface are built as pairs of connected virtual Ethernet interfaces and it can be thought of as a virtual patch table cable. What goes in one end comes in uh, from the other, and that's how you can connect a container to a hole. So let's take a look at it pictorially. <clears throat> so now we are now one deeper inside our virtual Ubuntu one that I showed you previously. So this is my VM. So I've defined two network in, um, spaces. You can think of this for all intent and purposes as two containers. So this is container one, container two. <clears throat> this container has a virtual ethernet interface um, and it has an IP address of 172.16.02. So it's got two section to end. One end is here and the other end, we can connect it to a different device for, for instance, a bridge. So we create the, I'm showing code and we create this um, a VET or virtual internet, it creates two sides automatically. One has an IP address, which we can connect to this side, and the other one doesn't have an IP address, basically it's just a connector. So we, we can then connect this area, which was isolated now through the bridge, we can actually connect it to other things. <clears throat> Same thing here. We have defined another na namespace, and this one, um, a different VET. It's got a 192.168.0.3 IP address. The same thing, one end is inside the container, the other end is connected to this bridge. And also we have the uh, virtual VM or virtual machines, uh, virtual uh, ethernet, which is connected and we can connect to other devices. So then we can, um, have another device. So we are now in uh, Ubuntu 2. We can create again similarly um, different namespaces here or different containers, assign them and create a width for each one of those and connect them to bridges. And then we have now on each of these devices or these VMs, we can have communication between these two um, namespaces or containers. We can go further, we can also have um, connectivity and connection between 
actually these devices on both sides of the VMs. And how do we do that? It depends. If we, they are on the same, um, these two VMs are on the same um, um, subnet, we can create a switch like this one that we created, like this one, but on the host itself. If it's not possible, if these two are on the different subnet, then you can use tunneling. And I'll, I'll show you um, as we go on. So the rest of this presentation, we are going to implement these scenarios. That is, we have two VMs inside VM. We have, each has two uh, containers. We set up the uh, VM uh, virtual um, adapters on each. We connect them to a bridge, so, we, so then we test to make sure that they can communicate with each other on each side, and then we connect uh, all those together. And one, on, on, in one occasion, these two IP addresses, are like this one, are on the same network, um, uh, subnet. Then we can create a switch and connect them together. And then, if not, then we create a tunnel. So uh, that's what we're going to do next. So let's go through uh, this together and create and implement this picture here. That is on two different servers. We have Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2. We are going to create on each server a couple of namespaces that you can really treat them as containers. We'll create a virtual Ethernet um, adapters on each one of those. And then we'll attach them to the bridge and then to create, uh, we define connectivity and the rules of how we connect from one side to the other. So let's go through the code. And I've defined some variables here. Let's go through that. Uh, first one I call NS1, that is namespace one. That is this guy here, name, namespace one, or container one. We can treat it as really as container. So NS1 is that, NS2 is the other one, uh, namespace. So we first we tackle one server and then we do the same thing on the other side. So, and the node IP that is the IP address of this uh, server and Ubuntu one again is 192.168.0.10 as you can see here. The bridge subnet that is this guy. The subnet is 172.16.00-24, and the bridge uh, IP address uh, address itself is we, we're going to assign it to 172.16.01. IP1 like that is this guy for this uh, virtual Ethernet one. We're going to assign um, IP address of 172.16.02. And the other one, uh, very much like the same, the other one is 172.16.03. Two node IP that is going to the other server. The other server IP address is 192.16.1.11. And then two bridge subnet, that is the bridge on the other side, is 172.16.0.11. And that is the side there. That's the um, subnet, so 172.16.0.1.0-24, that's a subnet. And the actual IP address would be 172.16.0.11. Two IP that is going from one server to the other, that is the IP address of the first virtual Ethernet is 172.16.1.2. And similarly, and the other um, web IP address would be uh, 172.16.1.13. So let's go ahead and execute this to have them in memory. So let's go ahead and press 8. I'm running this in Visual Studio Code. Okay, now that we create, we define those variables. Now let's go ahead and actually create stuff. So the first one we're creating the namespaces. So the, uh, um, the, the command is sudo ip net ns stands for net um, namespace add ns1. So in the ns1 we define as the next namespace one. So let's execute that. So we now created an uh, ns1 or network namespace one. We're going to do the same thing to do with this guy, net, net um, container two or net, net uh, network space two. So to kind of verify that, let's run this command ip net ns show. So we do that. We'll see that now we have two network namespaces. So we are here. So we have now two created two network uh, namespaces. 
Next, we are going to create the web or virtual Ethernet pairs. So this is the command, sudo ip link add width 10 type width and peer name and width 11. So as you can see there they come in pairs. So this one is we define, we name it as width 10 and the other one is width 11. So if you look at the picture here, we had width 10, this side of the width or virtual ethernet and width 11 is on the other side. This basically create a link between these two. So let's go ahead and <coughs> create, run that. And we'll do the same thing here. We create this pair here. So let's run that. And then let's just verify IP link show type width. So let's run that. And we can see we have now both the width 100 here, width 11. With one uh, two zero and with two one, so these are now we have completed this creation of these um, virtual Ethernet uh, adapters. So we're going to add now. Uh, they are not really attached to anything yet, although the picture shows. So we're going to actually attach one end of it to the namespace one. So let's take a look at the command: sudo ip link set with one one net ns and ns1 so we basically say we are saying we are attaching this this guy here to this namespace so let's run that and we do the same thing for the other one over here we are attaching this end to the namespace so let's run that now we are going to add um actually assign the ip addresses so we're going to assign the ip address of 172.16.02 to this guy so let's do that and that's the Basically, that all, and when we say net NX, uh, because we are reaching from outside into the namespace, we have to say net NX exec, kind of like a Docker exec. When you want to interact with the container, we use Docker exec. So for the namespace, is very similar. We say net NX exec, and then the command that we want to run, um, we are running it on namespace one, and we are adding uh, an IP address for this guy here. So let's run that. Now this guy has the IP address of 172.16.02. So we will do the same thing for this guy. So now this one has 172.16.03. Okay, good. So, good. so far so good. Now we are going to enable inside. Um, so we created these uh, uh, internet, virtual internet uh, adapters. Now we have to, but they're not app yet they're not enabled so let's this command will enable that so let's go through the command sudo ip net ns exec again at ns1 we are interacting with namespace one set dev uh, set device with one one app so let's run that now this device uh, is app do the same thing for the other guy over here so now that one is app Oops, sorry. Okay, that one is up now. And now we create a bridge. So now we have to create this bridge. So the command is sudo ip link at, we call it br0, we can, you can call it whatever you want. The type is bridge, so let's do that. And then we can verify that we actually created the bridge, so let's run that. As you can see here, we see that this is the bridge. And that's it. So now we are adding the network namespaces to the bridge. So that is, we are attaching this end of the adapter to this uh, bridge that we created. So let's do that. And we do the same thing uh, on the other side. So we, we do that. So now we have these two kind of connected together, but the bridge is not still enabled. So we're going to um, add the IP, sorry, IP address. So we're going to assign an IP address to the bridge. And the IP address is 172.16.01. So let's run that. And now we're going to enable the bridge. Again, very similar. 
sudo ip link set dev br0 up now we're going to enable these two so as you can see this side of the um, adapter doesn't have ip address this is basically just a connector but we have to enable them so now enable and so we can then run traffic through that okay now next we are going to set up the uh, inside the namespace one um, we're going to enable loopback and do the same thing for this guy we enable basically so it can ping itself and then we can verify you can look at the um, the the adapters that are attached to name, name, uh, namespace one as you can see this is a loopback that we just created so it's got the IP address of 127.001 and then the other one uh, is 172.16.02 so we can verify that now we have a loopback and also we have an adapter that this namespace can communicate with, with the outside world Okay, so we are going to now oops, set up a route or a traffic going from uh, from going from uh, the network ne uh, namespace one to the outside world. So uh, right now we can connect to the bridge, but we can't really go out. So in order to be able to connect from this side to this side, we have to set up a route, and that is we are going to set up the route. So let's go through the command net exec IP route at default via bridge one. And this is the device that we're going through. So we're going to enable to, we're saying that uh, anything that goes through bridge uh, zero, it has to go through the, uh, this adapter here. So let's execute that. And we do the same thing for this counterpart over here. Now we're going to um, add a route. So if you're going, we want if we want to communicate from this side, from these containers to this side, to this container, and to this uh, server, we need to set up um, a, a default um, or a route between these two sides, and that's what it does. So let's go through that. So do IP to bridge subnet. So that's going from this side connecting to, uh, that is, in order to be able to connect from this, these two uh, namespaces or containers to those side, we need to go through this bridge. So in order to go to the bridge, we need a route, and the route would be to go through this uh, adapter here. So that's the command. So IP route add to bridge subnet via to IP. So we're going through this, through the, through the, through the default, um, adapter here to the switch and then that would be our route through this IP address through this adapter and then through the bridge and to the, the, the other side. We're also going to enable um, IP forwarding because we're going from one server to the other. Now let's do some testing. So let me just clear this. Now that we set up everything, hopefully we'll see, I'm uh, just going to verify everything works. The next test would be ping or at, um, inside the NS1. So we're going to ping this to see, make sure we can reach to it. So let's run that. As you can see, it's successful. So we get a successful ping return. Now we're going to next ping the bridge. So from here, we're going to ping this bridge here and again it's successful and again the data back now we're going to ping from this side to this side we're going from this we're going to ping this adapter from next 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 uh, next space four next space one so let's run that and again we can now ping successfully from this side to this adapter here. Now let's see if we can ping from this namespace 
actually ping the server, second server. That is no 192.68.0. So let's see if we can ping that. And again, we are successful. We get a result back. Now let's see if we can ping this bridge over here from this namespace. If we can uh, ping this. So let's do that. And then again, successful. So now we are able to we verify, we can verify, we can ping uh, these two. We can ping the second um, server. We can ping the bridge on this side. Now let's say we can ping uh, one of these um, adapters. So we're going to ping 172.16.012. So we're going to ping from here to here, see if it's successful. And again, we can see that it is successful. So we're going to do the same thing. We ping from here now to this adapter. So let's run that. So as you can see, now we have connectivity between these two VMs. And everything connected. Um, we already, I already set up a switch between these two that is going through the Hyper-V switch because they are on the same network. Um, uh, so it's on the same uh, subnet. And these bridges, and this, the way that I demo, this is exactly how Docker sets up connectivity between containers. So hopefully it was useful. Next, we are going to go one step further and imagine if these two are servers on a different subnet and how we're going to create a tunnel between two. So one thing I forgot to mention is I had already set this app, like the second server, Ubuntu 2, um, all the namespaces and bridges and so on. And through the code, we kind of show you how to do this on this side. So it's kind of bear in mind that we have to do it on both sides. I only showed it on one side because it's exactly the same on the other side. So in the previous example, we looked at the situation where we have two servers, where we had Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2, and these two servers were connected, they were on the, they were on the same subnet, so they were, there was a switch between them. And we made uh, connections between um, the various containers on one server to the containers on the other server. So we made the connectivity available through um, specifying routes, uh, how to get from one server to the other. However, sometimes the servers could be uh, on different uh, subnet. And in that case, the simple route manipulation is not going to work. And we need another strategy. And that is where overlay networks uh, come into play. So what is an overlay network? It's really a virtual network which sits on top of the underlying uh, network. So it's all virtualized. And through that, we provide connectivity between uh, virtual environment, like um, containers on one server, uh, like we have in, this, in our example, to the containers on uh, a different server. And they're being used extensively, both in, for Docker and also for Kubernetes. There are different types of uh, overlay networks. Some operate uh, in layer two. Uh, for example, Flannel, you may have heard about that. Um, they, it uses uh, VXLAN, which is which encapsulates layer two Ethernet inside the UTP packet. There are also layer three um, overlay networks, uh, such as Calico is another network provider, which is used extensively um, in Kubernetes, and that uses IP and IP protocol. Basically, you, it encapsulates um, the IP or packets inside another IP, and then routes that IP to a different server. We will hopefully cover those in the, in the near future as we get more into Kubernetes, but this is just kind of the basics. So for our examples, uh, let's take a look at an example here. So uh, assume we still have those two servers, but now they, there's a router between them. And forget about the IP address, they're on the same subnet. Suppose that these are on a different subnet. So I don't have a different network to demo here, 
But imagine that we have a router between these two, so we can't really use a route simply to provide connectivity uh, amongst these uh, various containers on two different servers. So we need to come up with a strategy and setting up an overlay, simple overlay network. <clears throat> so that's what we do. So what we're going to do is we'll set up a UDP tunnel between these two servers. And this tunnel will have, on one side, has a different IP address, so this bridge will be connecting in um, to the tunnel through 172.16.100. And on the other side of the tunnel, we have a similar IP address for different, uh, is on a different subnet. So we have 172.16.0.100. And that's how the, uh, and everything that um, communi communication is encapsulated inside a UTP, a UTP packet or a datagram and uh, sends from one server to the other. <clears throat> so this is the overview of what we're going to do, and uh, next I'll show you how we accomplish that um, in code. So I have Visual Studio again on one side, so you can see, look at the code, and the diagram, uh, what we're going to implement on the other side. So again, to summarize, uh, again, we, uh, similar to what we had previously, we have two uh, Ubuntu servers, and we have a bunch of uh, containers on one side, and a bunch of containers on the other side. We want to provide connectivity amongst them. Um, we have a router in between, so in order to provide establish, we need an overlay network. And that's the uh, UDP tunnel that we, uh, we're going to establish, create, and which provides the connectivity between um, these um, various containers. In the tunnel, we have two sides, and the packets come one from one side and then goes through the pump tunnel, ends up on the other side and vice versa. So there's a bi-directional connectivity. On this side of tunnel, we have a different IP address. So on this one, uh, tunnel uh, on uh, Ubuntu one has IP address of 172.16.0100. And on the other side, on Ubuntu two, it has a IP address of 172.16.100. And creating the namespaces and VET and bridges is exactly the same that we did Previously, the only difference here is we define uh, a tunnel uh, for this IP address for the tunnel on this side, and um, similarly, an IP address on the other side. And everything else, uh, as far as creating the namespaces, the bridges, the um, virtual ad uh, Ethernet adapters, they're all the same. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go through that code again. Um, so this is here is kind of the meat of um, discussion for us, uh, how do we actually create this uh, UDP tunnel? Let me maximize that. And we are going to take advantage of a utility called SOCAT. So SOCAT, it's a very powerful and very flexible utility that provides bi-directional connect connectivity um, between two data sources um, using various methods. It could be um, UDP or TCP, uh, or a socket in this case, that we're going to use a socket, or could be pipes, um, SSL, files, uh, very, very flexible. So in our case, we're going to leverage SOCAT. We're going to establish a UDP, so that's the code here. Uh, um, you're saying you're establishing UDP between two uh, IP addresses, uh, uh, Ubuntu 2 and Ubuntu 1. Each one is listening on port 9000, and again, uh, we're using UDP. And then we define an IP address. Uh, we define it up there. We assign it an, uh, um, an IP address for the tunnel, and then we name the tunnel. Here, uh, I call it um, TON D UDP. And then uh, the type, TON dash type equal to ton. So there are two versions of this. Um, the ton in this very, uh, um, method that we're going to use, it provides a layer three uh, socket connectivity. Um, we can also establish a layer two. Um, um, and then if we change ton to tap TAP, then we kind of provide a layer 
uh, to uh, encapsulation. But now we're using uh, layer three encapsulation. So everything, all the communication between these two are encapsulated in layer three, uh, UDP a datagram, and it's exchange data between the two sides. And we need to run this on both sides um, uh, of the servers, and, and then both will be listening on port 9000. So I've already run that, and it's, uh, the tunnel is established. Let's take a look at how the packet can travel from, let's say, this um, container here to this container. Let's say we want to ping the container from uh, this container from this container. Let's take a look at the route that uh, the packets will need to take. And here, that's what we have, um, sudo ip netns exec ns1 ip route1. So basically, we're looking at namespace1. We want to see what route it will take to go out. So let's run that. And here it is the route. So it, all the routes go, um, connectivity or uh, packets go through 172.16.0. Zero, and then go to um, the red zero one. So all the packets go through this and then through our bridge here. And then we go to um, the other side. Now let's say, how do we actual packet from here once we get to this bridge, how do we, um, the packets get on the other side? So that's what we show here. IP route, get, and then this IP address here. So you see, how do we get from server one to the other? And that is how the packets are going through the tunnel, a tunnel here, and the IP address is 100. So the packets from here, uh, from this virtual adapter, goes through the bridge, then goes to um, this IP address one, 70.0100, which is the tunnel on this side goes to the other side and then out to the other. So let's test that. And here we're going to uh, ping this container from here. So that, that's what we have, exec, and that NS exec, and that NS1, which is this guy here, to IP address, which is 172.16.12. So let's run that. And as you can see, now we have um, connectivity through our tunnel, so everything is successful. We can also um, kind of take a look at raw packets as they go between these two servers, and that's what we have here. I created a script um, and basically uses T Shark. So T Shark is a command line version of Wireshark. You might heard of, uh, heard about it. That's a network monitoring utility in Linux. It's used very extensively. T Shark is a command line version of that. So here, um, it's a very simple script. Uh, we pass in the parameter. We want to, uh, we need to pass in an uh, interface, so we need to say which interface we're going to um, monitor. And the command here is sudo shark, uh, not port 22. Basically, we say we are not interested in uh, SH uh, traffic, but everything else we want to look at the source the IP source, IP destination, the frame and header, if they have any. So let's run that. Um, so just basically run that. And then we want to look at this width uh, one zero. So this is now listening. Now let's go back here. Let me just uh, move it a little bit over here. Let's run that command again and ping it. As you can see, now we can monitor the ping. And let me just close that. So 172.16.02, so that's uh, what we're listen, listening on. Uh, that's the IP address of the uh, over here. And we see the protocol ICMP. So we see the ping traveling from one server. Basically, this pings the, this server, and and the, the other one responds. So basically, um, that's how the 
uh, we see the IP, uh, the ping is working on this. So T-Shark is very powerful. You can use that for monitor any kind of network that's going to use. And we will take advantage of that in the future presentation as we get more into um, uh, Kubernetes and looking at various um, overlay networks that we're going to implement, such as um, Calico and Flannel. In this presentation, we covered the following. We looked at overview of Kubernetes network types. We looked at network OSI model. We looked at various network appliances, such as switches and routers, and in what OSI model layer they reside. <clears throat> we looked at how traffic flows in layer two and layer three networks. We also covered basics of container networking in really two sections. One, when the hosts are on the same subnet, and when the hosts are not on the same subnet. And we looked at how we leverage overlay networks. So thank you very much for your patience and for viewing this video. I have other presentations listed here. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.